Hi and welcome to the fourth lesson in the family topic. This lesson we're going to look at family diversity. So hopefully by the end of the lesson you'll be able to understand how different families form and differ within the UK and within a global context and look at some of the work on the rapporteurs and family diversity. So key concepts is the lesson that we're going to be looking at would be monogamy, polygamy, polygamy and polyandry. So as a starter, what is actually meant by the term family diversity? How would you define it in your own words? So feel free to pause, have a little think. So if you have a look at this graph, what would you say it is showing about how families, what the kind of most popular family types are currently in the UK? And again, here is another graph. They could give you um, graph data in the exam to kind of look at. So what would this table show? So family diversity then. Family diversity is basically the range of different types of family that are currently in the UK. So if we think about how societies have changed, Rapport and Rapport argue that families in Britain are very much going through a process of social change. We used to have pretty much mostly nuclear families, but now there are a lot more um, options available for people. This is called family diversity or diversity of families. And functionists like Parsons have obviously viewed the nuclear family as the best type of family, but the rapporteurs, they're quite optimistic about the benefits of other family types. So they looked at five different types of family diversity in the UK. So these are the five that we're going to look at step by step. Um, if you wanted to make a revision card on maybe each of them or kind of split your page into five different sections, you could do it that way as well. So family diversity is basically about choice um, and it's seen as kind of a positive thing within society. So the first one we're going to look at is organisational. So this is basically... Um, the idea that there are loads of different ways that you can organize your kind of family. So, you know, there's a decline in marriage, a rise in divorce, and then how families can be organized can be very different. So it could be um, your roles and how they're shared within the family. So you might have dual career families where both parents work. You could have both parents staying at home. It could be how your labor is shared. So obviously within families, where it previously might have been where a woman did a very stereotypical traditional housewife role and a male was a breadwinner. Now we have organisational diversity in terms of families can be arranged very differently these days. So if we look at maybe different students, one student, for instance, their mum might be the breadwinner, the mum might also be responsible for childcare, and the dad might take on maybe some of the housework. Another student may find that it's a very 50-50 split, and others may still find that it is very maybe traditional roles. So second type of diversity would be cultural diversity. So this is basically how family structures can be different depending on culture, religion, ethnic groups, things like that. So globally then the family can be quite diverse. So obviously in different cultures, you know, they have different family structures perhaps. Maybe women are in control, maybe men are in control and also different styles of marriage, such as monogamy, polygamy, poly, oh, I can never say this one, polygyny? Yeah, I can never say it right. Number four, polyandry. So basically, one of these refers to one at a time, one refers to women have several husbands, one refers to married to more than one person at the same time, and one refers to a man having several wives. So you might want to have a pause and see if you can remember which way these go round. So have a little think. Do you know? So monogamy is married to one person at a time. The way I remember it is mono means one. So I think someone's got a mono eyebrow. It means, you know, they're, they're married to one person. One, yeah. Uh, polygamy is married to more than one person at the same time. Um, actually, polygamy is... Um, actually illegal so you, in this country you can't do that uh, polygyny would be a man having several wives 
polyandry is a woman having several husbands. Obviously, one of those is a lot more popular, so men having more wives is generally the more popular one. So how could your religion perhaps affect family diversity? So for instance, if you're Catholic, have a little think, how might that affect your type of family? So some potential effects could be larger family sizes, so a lack of use of contraception perhaps, low divorce rates because again it's not really accepted within the Catholic faith and again probably following quite traditional gender roles in the home. So how would this differ then if you were, I've animated this badly, if you were a South Asian family so perhaps it would be again patriarchal, um, generally it would be the oldest male would have seniority and marriage is quite a strong commitment and again Divorce doesn't happen very often, sometimes arranged marriages. And this strong sense of family and identity and loyalty is really important. So all of these cultural effects or religious effects can have an effect on the type or structure of the family. The next type of diversity would be social class diversity. So this basically means that your family structure and how things are organised could be very different depending on your social class. So, for instance, working class families generally have more kind of traditional role relationships, whereas middle class families might be more equal. However, the kind of studies that this was based on, you know, things have changed since then and is kind of a little bit stereotypical. So, you know, it's not this case in all families, but stereotypically. Then we have life cycle diversity. So this just means... Um, your family can change depending on the cycle that uh, the part of your life that you are in at the mo at that moment. So, for instance, if you think about newlyweds, married partners with dependent children, and then retired couples, and think about maybe how might they spend their leisure time, how might they spend, how much disposable income would they have? So, for instance, I know now. Um, being married with a child I have less disposable income than I did when I was say 27 28 and you know my the responsibilities on me maybe are more now than perhaps when I'll be retired and the final one is cohort diversity so this is basically how family structures can be affected by events in the world so people who are roughly the same age would be part of the same kind of cohort so if you think about things like the start of the Second World War or the end of it, financial crisis, all of these things would have some impact on uh, families. So for instance, maybe the sec start of the Second World War, marriage rates increased because people got married before their husbands went off to war. At the end of the Second World War, we might have um, an impact on uh, birth rates and death rates. There was a baby boom um, not long after the Second World War. Um, so all of these things can impact on the type of families we have. So a cohort of individuals, basically those born within the same band of years, um, and you may have shared experience of a historical event. So potentially in the future, people will look at you as a cohort because obviously you have been through um, a global pandemic and look at the impact that that's had potentially on family life as well. So for example, couples entering into marriage in the 1950s uh, would have had the expectation that marriage was for life and that traditional roles were, you know, the norm. But obviously today, that is very different. So, what? how can this be used then? So, what I would like you to probably have a go at is, could you answer this question? So, describe what sociologists mean by cultural diversity. So, to get your kind of three marks, what you want to be looking at is, explain what it means, giving an example, and what is that showing? So again, you might want to pause, have a go at the question. So just as a, where are we up to so far? So, so far we've looked at family types. We've looked at the functions of the family according to functionalism, Marxism and feminism. And we've now done um, family diversity. So there are some practice questions here. I'll go through them if you would like to have a go. So feel free to have a go at those. And there is also a sheet which I will attach in the shared area if you would also like to have a go at that as well for revision. It's up to you. So I hope you have taken a lot from this and I'll see you next lesson.
Bye.